What's happening guys? Welcome to another video. It's been a while since I put out a video for you guys and it's actually been since before Christmas. So, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's. I hope you guys had a good time. I know I did. I put on a couple pounds. I got to shave off uh, come summertime. Um, got to gotta keep the, the weight of the vehicle down so I can get some fast lap times. But I hope you guys had a good time. Yeah, let me know what you guys did. Comment section down there. This was definitely a very interesting Christmas. Um, at least for me, it was quieter than normal. My Christmas is usually busy, busy going from one family's place to another, and it was a little bit on the slower side, which was kind of nice. Let me know what you guys did. I'm curious to hear how your COVID Christmas was. Um, but regardless, this video today is going to be pretty cool because if you guys have an OEM navigation or head unit in your car and you like that look, but you want to add more features, there's not really too many uh, routes you can go without changing out the head unit entirely. So in my Nissan 370Z, this is the Touring Sport model. So it's got all the fun stuff from the Sport option, like the big brakes, the LSD and all that stuff. But it also has the nice interior upgrades, like the different seats, navigation, the GPS up top, and a whole bunch of other things. So I don't have Apple CarPlay like some of the newer vehicles, even though basically this car has pretty much been unchanged since 2009. Now, with that being said, I now have Apple CarPlay in the car and it is sick. It is an amazing feature and it is integrated into the OEM head unit. I didn't replace the head unit to a different one and I have Apple CarPlay. So if you guys have an iPhone or an Android phone for Android Auto, it will all work and it's all wireless. Let me show you. So jumping inside the Z, when you turn the car on, you'll notice it has the standard navigation setup. So it has all the regular functions like you'd normally expect. You'd be able to see your climate control stuff. You'll be able to see your radio, wherever it is. You can select AM, FM, satellite, uh, disc, aux, and a whole bunch of other things. You have all the functions. You have the standard maps, which is pretty dated in my opinion. You have the phone connectivity things in here. You also have a bunch of other additional info like fuel economy. And you also have the reverse camera right there. So it's pretty sweet. It's not bad, but for a car that's, you know, close to 10 years old, um, it's not exactly the newest design. So with that being said, when you hold now this back button right here for three seconds, it changes to the Apple CarPlay side of things. And this is a very cool feature in my opinion. So with nothing connected to my phone at all, and this module here connected wirelessly, after I press that back button, the Apple CarPlay system will load right up and you'll be able to see all the features that you would normally see on an Apple CarPlay vehicle. So most modern cars come with a module like this so that as soon as you have your phone in your car or when you plug it in, you have access to your phone, your messages, your calendar, maps, whether it be Apple Maps or Waze, you can click on it and it all works flawlessly. Now the sweet thing too is that you can make phone calls from here, you can go to your phone, you can text people through it, you can check your calendar, your music you can play through it, whether it be any music that you have on your phone like Spotify or Apple Music, and you can go through the other options and apps that are found on this module. Now the cool thing too is that you can use the standard buttons like this to navigate through here. You can use the arrows if you want, and you also get to keep all the functional things like your backup camera. So it will boot right up as soon as you put it into reverse. You don't have to do anything fancy. You put it back, Apple CarPlay is loaded back up, and you're good to go. You can drive on your ways as if nothing happened. And guys, I gotta say, it is sweet because you can use anything on your phone through the module here. So all the buttons and controls on the steering wheel also work. It's a really sick setup. Okay, so there's gonna be two aspects that you guys are probably considering right now. So the first thing is gonna be price. The price point of this unit is not exactly cheap. However, when you consider what you're getting for the price, it's actually not half bad. Now, Nifty CD had two different kinds of these modules before. So let alone the standard and advanced module, which I have, they also have a uh, wired and wireless option. So I worked with Nifty City a decent amount for this module here, and I started off working with them when this kit was just hardwired. And I've got, I've got to tell you, it's come a long way since. It's completely wireless now, and it is a much more seamless integration from an aftermarket part to your OEM head unit. When you jump in your car after you have this set up, have your phone with you, turn the car on, 10 seconds later, it's all booted up and you're good to go. The phone is connected, you've got your Apple CarPlay set up, all installed and ready to go, and it's just a really nice unit, especially if you're daily driving your car. Now, it doesn't have to work only on a Nissan 370Z. They have a ton of other cars that they also support. Now, let's talk about price. I reached out to Nifty City and they sent me this unit for free. So I don't wanna just tell you go ahead and buy it, 
But after you guys see all the amazing features of this module, you know, it kind of makes sense as to why you would want to buy it, whether it be the basic model or the advanced. So the basic model has all the standard features like the Apple CarPlay, wireless, you can connect to your phone through it and all that stuff. The advanced module has a couple other things. It's close to about 900 bucks and it is on the expensive side, but in my opinion, for what I'm doing, you don't necessarily need it. So if I were you guys, I would get the wireless basic kit for your car. However, you can weigh the pros and cons to, well, basically whatever comes inside the kit, if it's worth it for you. Now for the other wireless Apple CarPlay modules, which is like a full replacement head unit out there, they not only look aftermarket, there's none of them out there that look like it's full OEM, clean, you know, nothing that looks simple. Everything looks too busy, it all looks cheap, and the fluidity of it isn't exactly perfect. This is killer, this is not like that. Because it integrates into your stock unit, it looks OEM stock. Now for the install, the install itself isn't exactly that hard. You need it literally a couple screwdrivers and maybe a couple hours of your time, and that's taking your time and being generous with it. You guys can install this very easily. Now that is given that you do one thing that I did not know how to do. So let's go through the installation right now. So just to be clear, this only works with vehicles that come with the dated navigation setup. How your vehicle looks bone stock with the factory navigation is exactly how it'll end up looking. You won't have any extra things hanging out of the stereo systems, no extra screens, no weird quirks here and there, just some awesome added features. This here is the piggyback module that we need to install. It comes with all of the necessary wiring and connectors to hook everything up. And the best part about this kit is that there's no soldering, no cutting, splicing, hacking, or customizing that needs to be done. It does come with the wiring layout for you, which may help during the setup. Now, this may seem like a lot of wires, but you don't need to install all of them if you just want the Apple CarPlay like myself. Since your phone does have a data connection and you have, let's say, music and everything on your phone, you won't need any additional antennas or video outputs hooked up, making the install very easy. The module from Nifty City is very nicely labeled along with the wires. So you pair the labeled wires with the labeled connections on the module and you're set. The nice thing too is that there are no two identical connections, making the install stupid proof. So to install the Apple CarPlay module, most of the factory interior trim pieces around the radio and screen will need to be removed. The shifter cover and shift boot will be the first of the interior trim pieces to be taken out. There's an electrical connector on the back side that needs to be disconnected. With it out, you'll then have to remove your shift knob to slide the boot and cover from over top of it. For my cooler work shifter, you'll need an Allen wrench to remove the bolt securing the knob to the shaft. With the knob set aside, you can then lift the shifter cover. Following that, there will be two Phillips screws on each side securing the knee pad plates to the sides of the transmission tunnel. With them out, you can gently yet firmly pull the pads outwards. Remove both screws for the other side as well and then remove the panel. Then remove the additional two Phillips screws on the bottom of the head unit bezel trim piece. You should be able to pry it upwards and unhook it from the car. The large stereo surround and upper button panel all come out in one piece. You'll notice that the push to start button and the passenger airbag warning light are both attached to the same trim panel. To disconnect them, you can push on them from the backside to push them forwards and then disconnect them at the connectors. They both work in the same way. With them disconnected, you can move the surround off of the car to expose one more connector that's found on the bottom side of the upper button panel. That will be all that is securing the large surround piece in place. Next, we need to remove the four Phillips screws securing the radio control panel onto the car. Simply unscrew each one and then lift up on the control panel. There will be one single electrical connector on the bottom side of that that's attached to the electrical panel. Unplug it and set it aside with the four screws. To remove the CD player and the head unit brains, there are more Phillips screws on both sides securing it. You also need to remove the upper LCD touch panel first as that bracket is over top of the lower one. Again, more Phillips head screws. Swing the bottom of the touchscreen upwards and then disconnect the two plugs from the backside. With that removed, the CD player can be pulled from inside the little cubby. Just as you expected it, there's a bunch of wires back there. Now, not all of them need to be disconnected. However, I will take all of them out just for the purpose of this video to show you how everything will be wired up. So thankfully, you won't have to make your car get to this point. So I have the wires and components all laid out for you so you can see how it's all hooked up. So in essence, the Nifty City module hooks up in between the LCD screen and the brains of the head unit. As you can see, those two connections on the backside are the only ones that need to be changed 
from the car's factory wires. The module comes with two three-way wiring looms. Now the first of them is the power loom and that connects to the factory wiring harness to the factory head unit and then to the nifty city module. That wiring harness brings all the computations and processing all together so that you can choose which is to be displayed on the LCD screen. The other three-way loom is the LVDS connector, which connects the LCD screen to the factory head unit and the Nifty City module. There's a bunch of extra connectors that come included, but you won't be needing to use all of them for the basic install. I wouldn't quite call this job hard, but it is a little bit complicated. Um, the hardest part of it is just going to be putting all those wires behind the factory head unit. So once you can stuff that all back there, once you route the USB wire maybe to your glove box or something like that, it'll give you enough space to get all this done. So for everyone basically tackling this install, if you leave the head unit installed, you just need to disconnect the two connectors found here on the left. You need to put the one three-way wire in between the wiring harness and the factory head unit. It's a super easy process. Now don't mind me as I reconnect all the connectors. When it comes to hooking up the LCD screen, the main white connector remains untouched, but the LVDS hookup is different. So the three-way wiring loom is connected first to the Nifty City module, and then it splits to both the factory wiring harness and the backside of the touchscreen. I hope that helps you guys get an idea as to how all these wires are going to be installed. Now to install the module, it will be placed over top of the factory head unit. Now notice here how all the wires and connections are all at the back side of the module. Well, it won't actually work this way if you go through the install. You'll find that if you continue with the installation like this, the front face plate will not be able to be clipped in as there's not enough space because there's other wires that have to be installed to the module. I struggled to get this part to work and I almost gave up on it entirely, but for whatever reason, with the module turned 180 degrees with the connectors at the front, it will all work. So when you're installing the head unit back into the car, make sure that you leave enough wires coming out through the top so that you can run the wires in this orientation. You need to have the module hooked up backwards with the cables routed just like this. Now as long as you position the module like this, it will all work out and be a clean install for your 370 or even G37. The footage that you're seeing here was first the wired setup, which is not the final product. It was a little bit too cluttered and didn't exactly work out that well. However, there is one aux cable going to your center console and that has to be routed for either the wired or wireless setup. You can choose to run it under the center console area or through the handbrake boot section so that there's no cutting, however the install is entirely up to you. Reinstall all the plastic trim pieces and everything back together and then it's just a matter of customizing the software and personalizing it to your likings. So with the car turned on and your phone right beside you, you can type in CarPlay into your phone. It will bring you Apple CarPlay, the device which is what is on this car here, and you'll be able to go to Customize and you can play around with the screen. So any apps that you have on your phone that are compatible with Apple CarPlay will show up here and you can play around with the order. So let's say that you want to change the messages and phone uh, around. It's pretty simple. Just go to your phone and literally just drag this to where you want it. So this is gonna be position one, two, three, four, five, and you know all the way down to eight uh, for the first page. So you can see that this changed here. So we have one, two, three, four, all the way down to eight. And when you go to the next page and you swipe over, it will show you the nine, 10, 11, and 12 apps that you have all down here. So the first eight will be on the first page, the second will be on the second page, and it'll just keep going from there. Now the sweet thing too is that with an Apple CarPlay module like this, you not only get to use all these features, but you also have like a home page. So when you swipe over to page one, it will show you your location, frequently visited places, your audio will all come up, and your three most recent apps will all show up on the left side of this dock. If you click on here, bottom left it'll bring you to this first page with all eight if you click it again it'll bring you back to the main page right there so it's pretty sick once you guys get familiar with this unit it's a really seamless and awesome integration into the car I would love to play some audio for you guys however the one problem is that because this is a YouTube video it will be demonetized so I promise you the audio is nice it works with the OEM speakers and everything flawlessly so I have the one aux cord going to the center console area, and that's how the music and everything gets played from the Nifty City module to the speakers. Now the Bluetooth Apple CarPlay module here that's connected via USB, you can place it underneath the center shifter area or in the glove box. It's entirely up to you. You just have to be like kind of conscious of where you're routing the wires. However, either option works. I'll probably put mine underneath the shifter for now, but we'll see. But guys, this thing is sick. 
In my opinion, there is no other kit on the market that can do this that is as nice and seamless as this. So you can obviously buy an aftermarket head unit that has Apple CarPlay, but it will not look OEM, it will not look clean, and you still do not get to use all the OEM creature comforts and functions as you would with the OEM unit. So because this is a piggyback module, you can flip-flop between using either side. So the radio side on the OEM head unit still works perfectly, however, you can also use the Apple CarPlay setup on the other side of it. It's a sick combination of OEM and aftermarket. I love it. I know by now there's gonna be a bunch of you guys that already have this module. If you do have it, let me know in the comments what your um, opinions of everything are because in the beginning it was a little bit frustrating getting the software to work, but now that everything's up to date, guys, it's a killer unit, I'm telling you. Every kit that is being sold as of today onward will all be updated so you won't have to go through all the problems and everything that I did when I was installing mine. If you guys wanna find more information about this Nifty City module, you guys can find more information in the description box. It's gonna link you to their website. If you guys wanna find more of the install all tips that's gonna be in the description box that's gonna be on my end um, if you guys have any further questions regarding this kit let me know comment sections down there I'm happy to help you guys out so if you message me I will definitely reply to you thank you guys so much for watching I'll see you in the next one peace